Hello, everybody, and welcome to Market Week in Review for the week ended February 24th, 2023. My name is Bei Chen Lin, and today I have the privilege of being joined by the legendary Mark Eibel. Mark, how are you doing today? Wow, that's a great intro. I think the uh, honor is mine. So uh, it's great to be here with you. I don't think we've done this together in person. So how fun this will be. Yeah, great. I'm excited. I'm sure you're excited too. And hopefully our viewers will be excited. <laughs> so there's a couple things that I was hoping to get your perspective on. Let's start with trying to unpack all the market volatility we've been seeing recently, moving on to a discussion of some of the key economic data points and earnings data points. Mm -hmm. And then maybe we'll wrap up with a discussion on the Federal Reserve. Does that sound good to you? Sounds great. Let's do it. Perfect. So obviously this week has been an eventful week. We had one day in which the Dow was down by approximately 700 points. Today, when we're taping as of Thursday, February 22nd, the S&P 500 was bouncing from negative territory to positive territory to negative territory to positive territory. So how can investors start to unpack what's going on? Yeah, I think it's a great example of, I think, the, the struggle it is right now for investors. I think this is the most nuanced market maybe in my entire career. Oh, I think we're back in the good news is bad news. Uh, and I think the service PMI number that came out this week was uh, a positive surprise. And so the economy might be doing a little bit better than people who think it should be slowing down. Uh, but that also impacts the Fed and what they might do. So again, good news is bad news. A little uh, political uh, issues over the weekend, and particularly we had the long weekend as well here in the States. And so Biden's visit, obviously, to Ukraine, and then you get the Chinese and Russian reaction to it. So that kind of set up for a, a Tuesday that wasn't so good. But I just think this is what 2022 was kind of like. 2023 is going to follow the same pattern. It's good news, bad news. Sometimes bad news is good news, vice versa. And as we work throughout the year, particularly anything inflation related and what the Fed might do uh, on a day to day basis. And as you mentioned, sometimes we within the same day, it's hard to know what is the market really kind of grasping onto. Right. And then with all this discussion of some of the turmoil in tech companies, it was pretty interesting to see, to see that NVIDIA had a really strong showing today. Yeah, and so, I mean, what an interesting day for data to kind of show what we're all talking about. NVIDIA has a nice number, nice day for NASDAQ. Uh, jobless claims came out, still another very good number. Maybe not a good number if you're uh, Fed share pal, because it looks like the labor market is still pretty strong. And GDP, we got another estimate for fourth quarter. It was down a little bit from the first estimate of 2.7%, but that's still, that's a pretty good number. Yet within that number, it looks like the consumer, as the quarter moved on, was starting to slow down spending a little bit. So again, you, I mean, here's three different numbers that came out today, and you can interpret them as good news or not good news. And that's you see it in the market action and going on today, uh, with, with markets going up and down and then back up again. So a bunch of mixed messages, difficult for investors to unravel. It is. But there was something else we got this past week, which was the Fed minutes. And I know a lot of people were very excited because they were trying to see if Chair Powell would give out more information about what conditions he would pause the rate hikes. But turns out we didn't get that. Yeah, and maybe the thing that most people were looking for, and it had almost the least impact on markets, right? I mean, I think we are in agreement that uh, probably a, a 25 basis point or a quarter point rate hike is coming in the next meeting. Maybe now we all debate, well, they go for two meetings or three meetings. But I kind of take a step back and go, well, the Fed's raised rates, what, about 18 times over the last year? Whether it does 19 or 20 or 21, we can kind of see the end point is coming. What will be interesting and maybe what is zeroing in on the minutes is when they do make this pause that we all talk about, maybe it'll be a little bit longer than people think because those inflation numbers are still pretty stubborn. So again, this trade off on the data on a day to day basis, uh, expect markets to kind of be choppy. We're off to a good start this year, but it doesn't feel really comfortable on a day to day basis. Um, stay diversified and uh, stay in the game. And I think 2023 will be a year in which that advice will hold true. Yep, for sure. That, those are some great perspectives, Mark. Thank you so much for stopping by. My pleasure. And to our audience, thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Eric Ristovan, Chief Investment Strategist for Russell Investments. If you like what you saw in this video and want to see more like it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.